evening, everybody. We're going to be doing solving problems involving volume tonight. Let's go ahead and work these out. First of all, we can see number seven says level of practice in uh, seven through eight, find the volume of each prism. But if I'm finding the volume, first I want to find, uh, make sure I'm using the formula, excuse me, and that is the, the volume equals the base times the height. Well, we have to find the formula of the base first. This time we have a triangle, and the formula of a triangle is base times height divided by two. This will give us the base of this prism. Well, uh, right now, we could say that divided by two is the same as multiplying by 0.5. The base of this triangular prism, we know it's a triangular prism because it has triangles on each side. And, and we know that the base is 4.2 and the height is 2.8. Now we simply multiply these things together and then multiply them to seven, that'll give us the answer. So here's my calculator. And if we work this out, we got 0.5 times 4.2 times 2.8. Five point eight eight. So that means it's five point. Oh, sorry, I forgot to multiply it to seven, didn't I? Five point eight eight. Sorry about that. Um, times seven. The volume is forty one point sixteen. Oh, that'd be forty one point. 16 millimeters cubed. We're going to double check it because I like double checking my work. And if I do this, it's 0.5 times 4.2 times 2.8 times 7, 41.16. All right, so got the answer to that one. And let's move on. So let's move to number nine. Number nine says a tunnel for the amusement park has a shape of a regular, a regular hexagonal prism. Hexagonal means it has six sides. With the dimensions shown, the prism has a volume of 3,572.1 cubic meters. Can two eight meter cars connected by a three meter connector pass through the tunnel at the same time. Wow. Okay. What they're saying is if this was a tunnel, if we had two eight meters cars, and let's just say this is a car, this is a car, and they're connected by a three meter connector. All right, so let's just make this look a little more like a car. And they're connected by this connector. Will they be able to fit through here? They want to know, is this long enough to hold this car and this car? Okay. Let's just pretend those are the seats on the car. All right. Um, so we got to find out the length here. We can you still use the formula of a volume equals base times the height. But since we're trying to find the height, we're going to uh, alter the form a little bit. Remember, uh, this could also mean that I'm dividing B from here to get H along, which means I would divide B from here. Well, this takes out my Bs and it leaves H by itself. So we have a new formula, volume divided by the base will equal the height. And that'll tell us how long it is. And then we can see if it's long enough. We know these two cars right here are eight meters. And they're connected by a three meter connector. So eight plus three plus eight. Well, eight and eight is 16, 17, eight to 19. That means I need it to be longer than 19 meters in order for both cars and the connector to fit. 
Well, we already know what the volume is because it gives it to us right here. So we can rewrite this as to say 3,572.1 is going to be divided by uh, the base. Now we have to figure out what the base is. Well, the base is a hexagon, and we know that a hexagon is really, um, if you look at this here, we've got six triangles that are all meeting off of the center. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I find the area of one of these triangles, I can multiply it to six. I already know I have to multiply it by six. I know a triangle's formula is base times height divided by two. So the base of this triangle is 8.1. So we're going to have to multiply this times 8.1. And we're going to have to multiply that to uh, 7. That's the height. And then we have to remember to multiply that to 1 half. So uh, because it's base times height divided by 2. Uh, or I could just write it as uh, 6, 8.1 times 7. Let's see, this, instead of putting a dot there, I put times 7. And then uh, all this divided by 2. All right. So let's give that a shot. <clears throat> uh, and then this will equal the height. So, first we're going to take, um, I guess we're going to have to take this number here. Well, let's find out what this is first, and then we'll know what to divide this by. Um, if I get my calculator, we're going to take, uh, let's see here, 6. Uh, this is all multiplying to each other. Times 8.1 times... 7 divided by 2. That's going to give me 170.1. So this is really 170.1. All right, and then this is 3,572.1 uh, divided by 170.1. Um, and that's going to equal H. All right. Uh, let's try to solve that. We've got uh, 3572.1 divided by 170.1. That's going to equal 21. So that means that the length of this or the height of the cylinder is 21. All right. And now that we know that, and we realize that the two cars, the connector only need 19, we can say that yes, uh, can two meters, uh, let's type this out. Yes, um, two, uh, let's see, cars and, uh, or two cars with a three-meter connector can pass, uh, through at the same time. All right. And that's what the question asks. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, you guys have number 10. So good luck with that one. I am going to number 11. It says make sense and preserve. A small cube has a volume of 64 cubic feet. A larger, so this one right here has a volume of 64 cubic feet. A larger cube 
has sides that are three times as long as the small cube. How long are the sides of each cube? Okay. Um, well, if this is 64 cubic feet, we're going to have to realize um, what is going to go ahead and equal that. We remember that our formula should be the same. And uh, let's see, I've got our writing tool. We remember that volume is equal um, to whatever the base is. Well, this is a cube, though, isn't it? So a cube really is um, whatever the measure is times three. Because think about it, if this is four, then this has to be four, and this has to be four. That means this uh, volume be four times four times four, right? And, uh, you know, now that I said that out loud, um, let's see here. This would have to be the volume they said is 64. So that would be in place of V. We'd have to find out what times itself three times would equal 64. And I said, just by guessing over here, what if this was four? I think that might actually be the number. Let's find out. Um, we can use our calculator in this way. We could take, um, let's see, this is the square sign. And what we need is the sign where we're able to put uh, the number in. Now, in many cases, I could just come over here where it says X, Y. And if I said four, x, y, and then I was to put 3 to see if 4 to the third power equals 64. Look at that. It does. Uh, so that tells me right there, this is 4, all right? 4 cubed. Now that I know that, I know each side is 4. Uh, how long are the sides of each cube? Uh, if they're saying the larger cube has 3 times as many... Well, if they're three times, four times three is uh, 12. So that means these sides are all 12. Okay. That one turned out a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, 12 is yours, and I believe uh, 13 is mine. It says here a mailbox has the dimensions shown. What is the volume? Again, if we find... Uh, the volume equals the base times the height. we got to find the base of this. And the base is made up of two different shapes. Looks like a square and a triangle. Well, the square is 8 by 8. So uh, 8 times 8 is going to be 64. And then uh, the triangle is going to be 8 by 2. Uh, divided by 2. Uh, remember, the triangle formula is base times height divided by 2. So the base is going to be 8. Height would be 2. We divide by 2. Really, that's just canceling each other out. So that's going to be 8. <clears throat> um, so the area of that triangle is 8. We're going to add 8 and 64. And 8 and 64 are going to make 72. So now we know this whole area is 72. Okay. And now that we found that that's 72, we have to multiply 72 to the height, which is 12. We check our calculator. Uh, 72 times 12 is 864. So this equals 864. Uh, well, this is inches. And since we're talking volume, this is cubic inches. All right. And that takes care of number 13. Looks like I'm down to my last one, which is number 15. And it looks like it's going to be a monster. Let's go ahead and look at this really quick. Give myself some extra room to work here. Well, when we look at this one, we say that it's got a cake of two layers. Each layer has a rectangular hexagonal prism. The slice removes one face of each prism. Uh, 
as shown, okay, uh, a hexagonal prism, it removes one slice of each prism, okay, each one of the prisms, as shown, what is the volume, the slice? Well, it looks to me, it says each layer, okay, a slice removed, okay, so what it looks like it's happening here is they're taking one piece, it's like one-sixth of it, away. Um, yes, I would say definitely that because they're cutting right into there and that's showing the uh, the perpendicular line there. So what we're looking at are two hexagons. Um, the bottom one is a big one. Okay, and I know that's not the prettiest hexagon. Um, and we have to remember that a hexagon has a center as well. And each one of these centers, you could say, is intersected. That's one, two, three. I'm sorry, that's I made an octagon there. Let's try that again. Hexagon has six sides. There we go. And if I do that, that each one of these sides, okay, uh, can go to the center and create its own triangle. As we see here, this bottom one, uh, perpendicular to the side is going to be 5.2. So each one of these is 5.2 inches. Uh, now the base looks like it's going to be 6 inches. So this is 6 inches. All right. And uh, I think that's about all the information we need to do uh, find for the bottom. It's asking what is the volume of the, the slice first? So let's solve that one. The volume of the slice is going to be one of these triangles. Uh, and if I know that, uh, I take that back, this is going to actually be the dot going down the center here. Okay. Um, and then let's not forget that it's also two inches high. The formula for volume stays the same. Volume equals the base times the height. Uh, this time, since we're talking one slice, we're only talking one triangle is the base. All right, we're talking about this one piece here that's been removed. And we know that it's two inches tall. We know from the center this way that it is 5.2. And we know this side is six inches. So from there, we can work. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, we take the formula for a triangle, which is base times height divided by two. Uh, we realize the base is gonna be six. The height is gonna be 5.2. And we're gonna have to divide that by two and then we're still going to have to multiply that whole base by two. All right. Uh, and really, if we're multiplying by two or dividing by two, we can almost cancel these out. But I'm going to go through the whole thing with you just to make sure you understand it. We got six times 5.2, six times uh, 5.2. That equals 31.2. Uh, we're going to divide by two. That's going to give us 15.6, and then we're going to multiply by two. So that whole thing there, uh, that top piece is 31.2. Uh, but remember, that's just the slice, I'm sorry, of the bottom piece, not the top piece. Now we're going to find this top piece up here, which is going to be shaped like this. All right? And if we do that, we see that the... Uh, this time, the center is 4.3, so 4.3 is going to be the height of my triangle. Uh, 5 is the base, and we're going to divide all that by 2. 
And then we're going to have to multiply it by its height. This time the height is 3. That'll give us uh, the small piece, the volume of the small piece. So uh, let's see. That's going to be 5 times 4.3 uh, divided by 2 and times 3. That's going to give us 32.25. 32.25. Now we're going to add, add these together to find out the total piece that was cut off. Well, 5 has not got anything to add to. 2 and 2 are 4. Uh, 1 and 2 are 3. And 3 and 3 are 6. That means the volume of one slice is 63.45. Uh, it's an in inches, so it's inch cubed. Now we have to find what is the volume of the remaining cake. Well, the remaining cake is going to be uh, the other five slices, right? We found the slice of this one, so the remaining is going to be one, two, three, four, five. We'll just take this number and multiply it by five. So we're going to, let's see, add it. Um, well, let's just take that number all together. 63.45. Multiply it to 5, and that gives us 317.25. So that's going to be 317.25 inch cube. All right, so we found our answer to B and A, and that's it for, for me tonight. Uh, good luck with the rest of them, and I'll see you tomorrow.